Hi friends, welcome back. So question for you, do you want to give Elon Musk a whole bunch of money? <laughs> well, that's the subject of today's video. And uh, this is the breaking headline today. You can see here, Tesla asked shareholders to re-ratify Musk's 56 billion payout. And again, this is breaking news. And uh, Tesla is gonna bring this to a vote. I wanna go over this stuff, it is wild. And um, if you've been following the channel for the last couple of days, we've had just wild news coming out from the Tesla and Musk camp. Um, I just made a video uh, just a few hours ago about um, Elon Musk and his burner account. You gotta hear it for yourself. <laughs> and um, this one also too, I don't wanna make any jokes about this. Um, I, I, I show and share some videos of Tesla employees and their thoughts after getting laid off. That was also in a recent announcement. And please watch this video. I think it's an important one because when we talk about layoffs, just always understand there are real people who are losing their jobs and, and, and it's nothing to really make jokes about. So just, just wanna make that clear. Um, and, and when we go on this whole Tesla thing, and it's such a weird time, it's like, okay, you're firing a, a whole bunch of people, you know, upwards of 14,000 plus people. And, and now you're like, hey, we gotta pay the CEO more money. <laughs> that part I do joke about, cause it's like, it's just, the timing seems really insensitive to me. I mean, at least wait a couple, I don't know, something's up guys. Um, this is it, letter to shareholders. Let's go through this stuff. I'll share my thoughts and please share yours as well. Dear fellow stockholders, we could call 2023 a watershed year for Tesla with many defining moments. However, for Tesla, in light of our past accomplishments, 2023 could also be called just a typical year of triumphs and achievements. Um, in 2023, the Model Y became the best-selling vehicle in the world. So th they like to repeat this phrase over and over. The fanboys and fangirls like to repeat this phrase also. And, and I want to make this really clear. And we're talking about this phrase here. The, the Model Y became the best-selling vehicle in the world. Um, when Tesla releases their delivery numbers, I have it right here. Uh, this is on April 2nd, 2024. They, they do this for all these. And you can check this stuff. But I just want to show you this. They combine their production and delivery numbers with the, with the Y and the three together, right? They don't separate out for the three and the Y. So I actually don't know. I'm looking at Tesla's official, you know, thing here from this is on their website, Vester Relations. I don't know how many Ys and threes that they're they're selling exactly. They're combining the numbers. So I always question when they when they push out this best selling vehicle in the world stuff because I actually don't know the actual number. Um, since Tesla doesn't divide it up, they can, they kind of fudge the numbers a bit. The same way, I don't know how many Cybertrucks they're selling. I, I don't know. It just says other models. So until they actually show me uh, on their official investor relations webpage what the actual numbers are, <laughs> I, I, I always laugh at this when they when they push this other phrase out there. I think it's ridiculous. Um, also, too, that the way that they sort of kind of painted, it, if you're just a lay person, you would think that, oh, my God, they're the you know biggest and best car manufacturer, they make the most cars in the world, et cetera. This is sort of how they paint it. But, you know, if, if you look at their own numbers, they, I guess they produce 6 million and this must be total, like, like all the cars make, because then they're saying here, um, they've done 1.8 uh, million in 2023. The thing is like a company like Toyota does like 10 million a year. So Tesla does 1.8 million a year uh, cars and, and Toyota does 10 million. So I just want to give you just some perspective on this. I don't know how many Ys they're actually selling and they, they still try to make the case of the best selling vehicle in the world, which could be true. I just like to see the numbers and, and, and not your combined numbers and, and fudging it. So hope you guys understand that point there. Um, let's keep going. Um, we launched our Model 3, our new Model 3 lineup. Um, it was a refresh. Uh, it, it, it's a refresh. I, I, it, it's not like entirely new. It's, it's just a refresh. Um, they need to, they really need to come up with a new model that that is, um, they need the refresh. <laughs> like, well, they need to make a more drastic change, I would say. Um, they also, they also saying here, saw tremendous strides in our quest for FSD. Um, I would say their FSD is improving when it was tremendous. You guys can be the judge of that. And we began deliveries of our innovative and highly anticipated Cybertruck. Um, uh, innovative, all to say bold choices. <laughs> uh, highly anticipated, I would totally agree with. I, I was like looking forward to like, what the heck are you guys gonna pull out of, you know, what kind of out of your hat? And it's fun to make fun of. So I would agree with that, the last statement there. Um, we also witnessed the beginning of significant growth in our energy storage and services and other businesses. So I would agree those parts of the business are, are growing. I would agree with that. Um, but it's still insignificant to the, the whole of the company because at the moment, like 95% of your revenues come from cars. So this other stuff is actually quite small. Um, but yes, it has been growing. I, I agree with that. Um, we believe these types of triumphs and achievements are normal course for Tesla because Tesla is a nimble organization with an unmatched pace of innovation. 
that has resulted in products and services that surpass all expectations driven by visionary leadership and most importantly, the best and most dedicated uh, employees in the world. So this is kind of, um, you know, it's up for debate. And also, too, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's an awkward time to be saying these things when you just laid off 10 percent of your people. Um, we want to thank all of our employees for their outstanding efforts. Um, of course, a key part of this nimble organization requires careful management of resources. We recently announced a company-wide restructuring that reduces our headcount by more than 10% globally. So at least they do address that. Um, over the years, and talk about the, the layoffs, uh, over the years, we have grown rapidly with multiple factories scaling around the globe. I would agree they've, they've been growing over the years. I agree with that. Um, with this rapid growth, there has been duplication of roles and job functions in certain areas. So this part here, I'll push back a little bit because let's just say for example you you know you start out with this for example you start with one accountant and and you know you're growing and then and then you hire a second accountant so now you got two accountants and they kind of do the same thing but you know you're growing so you, you need that extra help what i would make the case what tesla's probably going to be doing is you know firing the second accountant and then making the first accountant do more work <laughs> so <laughs> yes you cut costs but you know i'm sure the the current employees are going to get more work in, in their log and and uh going to be stressing out about that. And Elon's going to be like, yeah, if you love this company, you work 24-7. So I think that's what's going on over there. Um, more what they also say here, we believe it's important, uh, extremely important, they say. We believe it is extremely important to look at every aspect of our business for cost reductions and increasing productivity. So it's odd that we're talking about cost reductions here when, when there are this whole, th or cost reductions when this whole thing is about paying Elon that $56 billion. Um, this action will prepare us for our next phase of growth as we are developing some of the most uh, revolutionary technology and in, in, in auto energy and artificial intelligence and that's up for debate how revolutionary they are so i'll just let you guys decide for yourself um with your vote in 2024 annual meeting t tesla will thrive so we're voting uh, our stockholders drive tesla okay your votes and your voices make critical decisions for future of our company uh, we have and want to continue to listen to you um that is why we asking we are asking for your support for our management proposals, including re-election of two of our hardworking, dedicated directors, Kimball Musk and James Murdoch. So, do you want to put uh, Elon Musk's brother back on the board? <laughs> I, my personal opinion on this stuff is like, if you really want a legitimate board, get the brother off, get the family members off. That's kind of ludicrous. Uh, James Murdoch is connected to the. Um, the, the Rupert Murdoch, I think, I believe he's the son of Rupert Murdoch. It could be, I, I'm pretty sure it's son. I don't think it's brother. I think it's son. Uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think it's the son. And that's the Fox News dude. Um, interesting. So they could, they might be talking about possibly removing these people. Well, I guess up to vote. We'll see. Uh, however, there are two important proposals I want to touch on here that we believe are critical to the future of Tesla, success of Tesla, both of which were recommended following a rigorous and thoughtful analysis by an independent special committee. Okay comprised of another one of our hardworking uh, directors in Kathleen Thompson. Okay, so here's what we were talking about. Uh, one, approving moving Tesla state of inc incorporation from Delaware to Texas. And I think Elon put this up to vote on Twitter. So now we're voting uh, as shareholders or, or you're voting, I'm not a shareholder, but you're voting as shareholders. Um, and here's two, ratifying Elon Musk's compensation under the CEO pay package that our stockholders previously approved at our 2018 special meeting interesting so this is kind of the key um it's going to be an awkward time to be asking people who have lost a whole bunch of money in in, in their stock this year um you're down like roughly 60 percent from the high you're down and i think you're down like roughly 40 percent this year some something like that uh, i can check the exact price i mean it's fun fluctuating but it's been going down and, and telling people hey let's keep elon Honestly, when I read this, I'm think, thinking, I wonder if there's been discussion inside in the inner circle that Elon's like, yo, I'm leaving if you don't pay me. I, I, I'm just I'm just being honest. I think that there's a possibility of that. And that I've said that several times. I think Elon's on his way out. But who knows? We'll, we'll see. Or he takes the money, then runs. <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to leave until you pay me. I, I don't know. Um, the other issue, is too, is like, okay, it, it, perhaps, you know, that $56 billion, you know, what if instead of you use that to do share buybacks, just for example, and, and give you you know, some of your money back, uh, essentially, you know, burn shares and, and make your shares more valuable. Um, the other thing you could do with the money for the six billion, what if you invested that into developing that Tesla Model 2, which I, which I think would probably be a, a, a good route. I, I mean, myself, I wouldn't be messing with that RoboTaxi stuff. I would go with the Model 2. 
Um, but hey, Tesla, you, you do Tesla. Um, but uh, some people, I don't know if they're gonna be out there going, yeah, I really wanna pay that guy. Uh, the other thing I too, I, which I think is gonna be hilarious in the next couple of days after the pumpers read this stuff, I promise you, I promise you, the pumpers will be out in full force uh, saying, guys, we, we gotta vote yes, and we gotta pay Elon Musk 56 billion. And, and, and like, remember, I, I you know made videos about this thing. I think Musk is paying these people to say the said things uh, through social media, uh, because because if, if you're on Twitter and, and Musk boosts you on Twitter, you get more money. Or if Musk tweets out your YouTube video uh, from his account, you get more views and hence more money. So it's kind of a way to, 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 to pay these influencer people. And, and also too, I've, I mentioned before in this other video, uh, with this burner thing where that there's a lot of robot fake accounts out there that also be like oh yeah 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 give them some money give them some money but be very very leery of, of just the, how the world works of you know fake accounts bot people etc so um let me keep going to this but i think i think this is a really interesting point here so why texas it says here texas is tesla's home okay and also too, to to be fair to this whole or not fair but just Talking about our whole system, I, I think the whole U.S. tax system is, is, a, is a joke, to be really frank, to where companies can, like, you know, incorporate in Delaware or, you know, Wyoming or whatever, and then they put their headquarters in another state. Like, that, just the, our whole system is messed up. And I hope you guys understand, like, like it's nuts that we have this way that companies do things. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, that's a whole other debate, but, you know, I, I just think it's ludicrous, and I think that should be changed. And, and I would agree, Tesla, you, you know, move your, if your headquarters in Texas, corporate Texas, I would agree with that. So, but just our current system, you know, and, and you can't really blame companies if the system's the way that it is that you can, you know, incorporate or whatever in a different state. It, it, that's a long discussion, but I, I wanted to bring that up. Um, 2024 is the year that Tesla should move home to Texas. We are asking for your vote to approve Tesla's move from Delaware, our current state of incorporation, to a new legal home in Texas. Texas is already our business home. And we committed to it. Giger Factory Texas is one of the largest factories in the United States. So again, it just it addresses our, our funky tax system in USA and whatever. It's ridiculous, um, and, and or legal system or corporate system, however you want to say it. But it's just it's crazy. Um, covering 2,500 uh, acres across the Colorado River, the Giga Factory is a manufacturing hub for our most innovative vehicles, including the Cybertruck and the Model Y. We have a significant number of manufacturing operations and engineering employees in Texas, and our executives are based there. Okay. Texas is uh, where we should continue working towards our mission of accelerating a world's transition to sustainable energy. <laughs> I laugh here too. It, it's so ironic because like you're going to Texas and that's like the oil state and you're trying to like develop technology to, to compete against the oil state. So it's just, it's, I find that really ironic. Um, uh, as we lay the foundation of our growth with our ramp and build our fa uh, build of our factory of factories for our future vehicles, we help meet the demand for oil, uh, energy storage as well as with progress in our intelligence via, via full self-driving and Optimus. So they're saying, hey, we got to go to Texas so we can build robots, AI, and FSD. Uh, we have received letters from thousands of Tesla stockholders, large and small, supporting move uh, home to Texas. We have heard you. Uh, we now formally ask you that you speak in a meaningful way and vote in favor of tes taking Tesla to our business home of Texas. And I'll be curious because I haven't, actually I haven't read this, so we're gonna go through right now. I'd be curious if, if they've received letters of like, yeah, I really wanna pay Elon Musk 56 billion. I'd be curious if people say that. <laughs> Let's keep reading here. Um, ratif ratification will restore Tesla's stockholder, stockholder democracy. Okay, okay. Um, cor corporate democracy and stockholder rights are at the heart of Tesla's values. Earlier this year, Delaware Court ruling in Tornetta versus Musk, uh, which can be found as Annex uh, 1 to this proxy statement, struck down one of your votes and rescinded the, the pay package that an overwhelming majority of you voted to grant our CEO, Elon Musk, in 2018. The Tornetta Court decided years later that the CEO pay package was uh, not, quote, entirely fair to the very same circles who voted to approve it, even though approximately 73% of all votes uh, cast by our uh, disinterested stockholder, uh, sorry, yeah, by our disinterested stockholders voted to approve it in 2018 and um the basic ruling on the case of the basic just and, and um you know you can read the whole thing yourself i'll just be a bit just a bit was like um did you adequately inform the shareholders of what they're voting on what this whole thing is and also too uh, is the board of directors are they following you know the fiduciary duty to look out for shareholders and and part of the case was um you know the the the, the board is is way too tightly connected to uh, Elon Musk and um, not necessarily looking out for shareholders, looking out for Musk and themselves. So 
Uh, this you can debate this stuff. I just wanted to bring that up. Um, but this is the, the, the stuff coming from from Tesla. Um, also, too, it says because of Delaware court second guessed your decision, Elon has not been paid for any of his work for Tesla for the past six years. That has helped to uh, generate significant growth and shareholder stockholder value. That strikes us and many many share, stockholders from whom we already heard as fundamentally unfair and inconsistent with the will of the stockholders who voted on it. So it's interesting that they're uh, not getting the letters in love to move to or to vote for Elon's pay like they did with say the Texas with the letters and stuff. Uh, and I'll be curious if they mention any kind of like love letters to Elon to pay him. <laughs> I'll just be curious. But I think that the, the Tesla pumpers on, on social media will be pay the guy, pay the guy. I'm, I'm sure they'll say that. Um, what else they say here? It says um, 2018 CEO pay package required Elon to deliver transformative and unprecedented growth to earn any compensation. It was a big risk and many thought that the plan's targets for benefits to stockholders were simply unachievable. But our company and our leaders have always had big dreams and it's fundamental to our entrepreneurial spirit of Tesla to take big risks for the chance at big rewards. This had, this had led to incredible innovation and progress and economic gains. <laughs> economic gains, I like that. <laughs> you gotta mention that. Um, and, 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 um, and, and we have achieved at Tesla. In 2018, we asked for unbelievable growth and accomplishment Elon delivered. Tesla stockholders have benefited from unprecedented growth under Elon's leadership. And Tesla has met every single one of 2018 CEO pay package targets. And most importantly for the future of Tesla, the 2018 CEO pay package built in further incentives to benefit Tesla stockholders by inquiring that Elon hold on to any shares he receives when he exercises his options uh, for five years. And, and it's funny when they bring this stuff up because I'm th thinking out loud in my head of like, maybe, maybe like Morgan Stanley's behind this, but like, yo, figure out a way to get Elon more shares so he can sell his shares on the open market so we can get our money back because like he bought a bunch of money to pay, pay for Twitter. <laughs> don't think this arg argument, don't think these conversations don't happen. I promise you they do. We're talking about billions of dollars here and, and um, people want to get paid and, and Elon actually doesn't have a lot of cash. He, he, he's wealthy, but he needs to have these uh, stock options and, and things to, to share these, uh, to sell these things for cash to pay back um, the, the, the Morgan Stanley, and it's not just Morgan Stanley, it's, it's a, bunch, a bunch of people that, and I believe he's in the whole 13 billion. I, I believe that's the number. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's in, out of that order. And, and they're paying ludicrous percentage on that as well that he, they owe. Um, let's see what else here. It says, um, okay, uh, which means he will continue to be driven to innovate and drive growth at Tesla because the value of his shares will depend on it. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Let's be honest, let's value the shares, right? Okay, um, the board stands behind his pay package, okay? Uh, of course you do, because you stand to benefit also. <laughs> um, we believe in it in 2018. We are asked Elon to pursue remarkable goals to grow the company. You, as stockholders, also believed in it in 2018. Hmm, but what about today, guys? That's the key. Um, when you overall improved it, time and results have only shown uh, the wisdom of our judgment. We do not agree with the, what Delaware Court decided, and we do not think the Delaware Court should uh, sorry, said it is how corporate law should or does work. Uh, so we are coming to you now uh, to fix this issue, which is a matter of fundamental fairness. Respect to our CEO. You have the chance to reinstate your vote and make it count. We're asking you to make your voice heard once again by voting to approve the ratification of 2018 uh, Elon's uh, compensation package. Thank you for your continued support of Tesla and Together with my fellow board members, I hope you can join us for our 2024 annual meeting, June 13th, guys, uh, 2024 at 3.30 Central Time. And that's from Robin Denholm. And um, it's fascinating because we're in April right now. They wanna have this vote in about two months. And then we have that August 8th thing. And um, to, to, to talk about Elon Musk and, and the whole Tesla team and all that stuff, um, one thing they're really good at they're good at always, always getting you to think about the future and anticipating something and then ultimately being disappointed. But <laughs> but just be honest, they're, they are good about like, hey, forget about that last promise or the last thing we talked about, think about the future. And they're good at that. Um, I think this vote's gonna be fascinating. I, honestly, I don't have any predictions um, other than you know for people who are into this stuff, you can vote the way you like. I already know what the pumpers are gonna tell you. They're gonna say, vote for the guy, pay the guy, whatever. Uh, my point of view is, you know, could you use the 56 billion to, with other things to help the company? Uh, I think Tesla's in a real uh, struggle right now. Margins are shrinking. Competition is real. Um, also, too, you're in an environment where people maybe not want to go out and buy new cars. Um, you also have a CEO that's aging. He's 52, um, and he's going a bit crazy, in my opinion. 
He's also spending, you know, a lot of time with whatever is a 10, 11 kids, how many he's got over there. Uh, <laughs> he really does have that many. And, and multi, you know, managing his multiple companies and, and spending all his time tweeting out, you know, whatever, like at all times getting involved in politics and stuff. It's like it, it, any normal company, he would have been fired already. So it's strange now that we're saying, hey, guys, we should pay this dude more uh, or, or, you know, paying the 56 bil- billion that, that whatever. Um, and and uh, that the court struck down. That's a good way to say it. The court struck down. Um, and uh, we'll we'll see what people say. I, I think this is going to be a really fascinating vote. And um, I, I I plan to go and uh, <laughs> not to the shareholder meeting, but I, I plan to go and keep track of this one because because I, I think it's going to be really funny to see what happens. Um, I, I will I will agree with, with with everyone though. I I think this year really is a, a big year for Tesla because we're at the point of like, dude, stop it with all the you know uh, empty promises, false advertising, and all this stuff. You got to deliver, and, and and we want to see some results, et cetera, and, and got to make some negative changes. Um, I think the layoffs, though, the timing of this, and then the mess payout. There's going to be a lot of stories coming out of Tesla. I know some people will be under NDA, but you may have you know rub people the wrong way, et cetera, um, and we may start to get some stories leading up to this vote. So uh, stay tuned, guys. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of drama going on with this stuff. I have not seen anything like this in my lifetime. This is absolutely insane. So. Thanks again for watching and uh, I'll catch you next video.